Hello, today we're looking at noun phrase modification, very briefly, and then at relative clauses. The first part that we start with is the head. This is the noun around which the other components cluster. It dictates concord and congruence. So, for example, if you said the red car, then you would say the red car is, the red cars, the red cars are. OK, look at these four sentences. In each sentence, I want you to select just one word. And if you were to point with your finger at something, then that would be it, that one word. That one word is the head. And let's look at the answers in three seconds. One, two, three. So the head of a noun phrase is just one noun. As you can see here, girl, furniture, chair, boys. We can add words before or after the head to modify what we actually mean by the head. Let's start with pre-modification. This contains elements that precede the head, that come before the head, such as determiners, adjectives and nouns. So here we have the, which is a determiner, a definite article, and an adjective, tall, the, the tall girl. So girl is the head, and the tall, that's pre-modification. Some very expensive office furniture, same kind of thing. Notice that office, of course, is a noun, but office furniture is two words in English. It's not a compound noun. It's probably just one word in, in German, right? Post-modification. So elements that come after the head, they post-modify it. They can be prepositional phrases, relative clauses, non-finite clauses, or reduced relative clauses. So, the chair by the wall. We know that chair is the head. By the wall, that is a prepositional phrase. It starts with by, the preposition. That's, that has the same meaning as next to the wall. All the boys playing in the garden. Playing is a non-finite clause. Non-finite simply means you can't um, add an ending such as S. You can't say playings. Um, we could debate whether that's, this is a non-finite clause or a reduced relative clause. Don't worry about that right now. Okay? And you don't actually need to know what a non-finite clause is anyway. Let's look at the third one. That's more interesting. A car which she bought recently. So car is the head, which she bought recently is a relative clause. And relative clauses, that's the real focus of today's class. Right, so let's look at a couple of sentences. First of all, I come from Otley. Actually, I come from near Otley, but let's say Otley for now. Otley is in the north of England, so that's true. We don't really speak like this, do we? I put it on the table, the table was in the room, the room was in the house. So what can we do to make these two sentences simply one sentence? I come from Otley, which is in the north of England. I come from Otley comma, which is in the north of England. I tried to use a relative clause, but what kind? In this sentence, the relative clause, which is in the north of England, is simply extra information. Sure, it's nice to know, but it doesn't change our understanding of what Otley means. It's just extra. So it doesn't define the meaning of Otley. 
So this is called a non-defining relative clause. A non-defining relative clause always has a comma before it. It just so happens that there are two places called Otley in England. I know, the horror. The other place is a very small place in the south. So now we have this sentence. I come from the Otley which is in the north of England and not the Otley which is in the south of England. What's going on here? We can see already that we don't have any commas. What kind of relative clauses do we have here? Here we have two examples of defining relative clauses, which is in the north of England, which is in the south of England. In both cases, we need this information to understand what we mean by Otley. The Otley, which is in the north of England, you can think of that as being one referent, if you want. And the same with the second part of the sentence. With defining relative clauses, we never have a comma. You can now look at both sentences together. The first sentence is basically, I come from Otley. And we can add this extra information if we want. I come from Otley, which is in the north of England. In the second sentence, you need everything. Because if we did not have the relative clauses in the second sentence, the sentence would be, I come from Otley and not Otley. Okay, so they really do define what we mean by Otley and what we mean, what we mean by Otley. <laughs> this slide is a few years old, but never mind. Which is correct, A or B? So in A, we have Murray, who is Scottish, won Wimbledon. In B, we have Murray, who is Scottish, won Wimbledon. What do you think is correct? That's right, it's A. Murray, comma, who is Scottish, comma, won Wimbledon. Who is Scottish is extra information. We don't need it to understand what we mean by Murray. So this is a non-defining relative clause. It does not define the head, which is Murray. The basic sentence in A is Murray won Wimbledon. In B, without any commas, it's defining. So here we would for instance, be talking about two people called Murray, and we might say the Murray who is Scottish born Wimbledon, whereas the Murray who is English didn't. Please now do activity one in the document on study P. You will see that there are five groups of sentences, group A, B, C, D and E. Each group contains three sentences. In each group, only one sentence is possible. So do that now, please, <laughs> and then we will go through the answers. I hope you've noticed that in all five questions, the correct sentence is sentence number three. Let's go through them. We'll start on this slide, obviously, with A, B and C. So A, three. My bike, which is called Gertrude, has a flat tire. 
So the basic sentence is, my bike has a flat tyre, which is called Gertrude, is extra information. We don't need this, <clears throat> we don't need this to understand what I mean when I say my bike. So it's a non-defining relative clause. And a bike is an inanimate object, so the relative pronoun is which and not who, even if the bike does have a name, a human name, Gertrude. All of my bikes since the early 90s have been called Gertrude. Um, it's just a funny name in English. B. 3. Philippate the fish, comma, which I thought was a mistake. What was it that I thought was a mistake? Well, the whole fact that it, he ate the fish, it wasn't the fish, it was the whole thing. This is called a comment clause, and it's a comment on the whole sentence, Philip ate the fish. A comment clause always has a comma, and then the relative pronoun which. Okay, so the which doesn't refer to just one noun, it refers to the whole clause, and this is a comment on that clause. C. 3. Madonna, who is American, is rich. Obviously we have who because Madonna's a person, and the basic sentence is Madonna is rich. So who is American is additional information, it's extra information. This is a non-defining relative clause. We don't need who is American to know who Madonna is. If there were two Madonnas, we might have it without commas. We might say the Madonna who is American is rich, whereas the Madonna who is Canadian is poor. If you're taking writing with me, yes, I did use this example recently. D3. Here we have a defining relative clause, which is on the corner of Leeds Road and Poor Road. We need this information to know which house we're talking about. Otherwise, the sentence would just be, the house is on fire. <coughs> okay, so... The house which is on the corner of Leeds Road and Paul Road is on fire. E3. This is the book whose author won a prize. You might be thinking, hang on, whose? Surely that should, be lo that should refer to a person and not an inanimate object like a book. Well, we don't actually have a suitable relative pronoun um, in German. You've got deren, I believe, when it's a genitive, blah blah blah, or whatever. I don't know. Um, okay, if you want, you can say, "This is the book, um, the author of which." won a prize or something like that but in normal language we can just say whose in this case right so now we need to look at that we have these two sentences from before a has a non-defining relative clause because witches in the north of England does not define what we mean by Otley. And B has two defining relative clauses. Where witches in the north or south of England does define what we mean by Otley. In one of these two sentences, the word which can be replaced by the word that. Do you know which one? 
That's right, it's B. I come from the Otley that is in the north of England and not the Otley that is in the south of England. We can only use that in a defining relative clause. Notice, of course, we do not have a comma before that, just like we would not have a comma, comma before which, when it's a defining relative clause. We can't use that in a non-defining relative clause, so A. There are some people out there in the world, you might find them on the internet, who believe that if you use which with A, then you have to use that with B. This is incorrect. This comes from people not understanding how language works. With B, you always have a choice between which and that. Or who, etc, etc. Notice that when we have in B, when we have that is or which is, and the verb is to be, so is, we don't always need to use that. Let's see that. I come from the Otley that is in North of England and not the Otley that is in the South of England. But because we've got which or that in a defining relative clause and the verb to be, we can just delete that. We can just say, I come from the Otley in the North of England and not the Otley in the South of England. When we speak, we can use either variety. It depends on which comes out of our mouths, basically. I recommend that for writing, for academic writing, for instance, that you generally keep the longer form, which is or that is. But it depends. We're now going to do activity two in the document on stud IP. You'll see that you have one page with this text twice. First of all, in the top half of the page, so just the first version of this text, I would like you to take some time to add commas to this text. And I'll see you back here in whatever time it takes. Five minutes? Ten minutes? I don't know. But I'm going to keep recording, so you're going to have to press pause. And could you please do that now? OK, here I am again, and I hope you have done this. OK. Now, I am going to read this text out loud to you. And in the second version of the text, in the bottom half of the page, I would like you to write the commas that you hear from my intonation. OK. Afterwards, you can compare it with your first version. So write down the commas that you hear. Here we go. I walked into the bar. There were three bartenders who were working there. The bartender who was behind the bar was mixing cocktails. There was also a bartender who was talking to customers. Another bartender, who had green hair, was collecting glasses. I spoke to the first bartender that looked at me. I ordered a beer that was in a bottle that had a green label. It tasted awful. Must have been Beck's. <laughs> Sorry. 
I then looked in a mirror that was hanging on the wall. I could see my face, which was now also green. I'll say that part again. I could see my face, which was now also green. I left the bar in a hurry. Okay, so I'd like you to compare the two texts and see how many commas you have in the first version and in the second version. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you where the commas are. That's right, there are only three commas. Let's look at these. So the first example where there are two commas we have. Another bartender who had green hair was collecting glasses. That's non-defining. Who had green hair is just extra information. We don't need that to understand what we mean by another bartender. And the second example, I could see my face, which was now also green. I only have one face, and so this is just extra information about my face. In all the other cases, we have defining relative clauses. So I walked into the bar, there were three bartenders who were working there. And so on. Do you want to know one way that we can be sure that these are defining? Well, remember that if it's defining, if a relative clause is defining, and if we've got the verb to be, we can remove the relative pronoun and the verb to be to have a reduced defining relative clause. So now I'd like you to go through the text and delete the parts where we've got a relative pronoun, pronoun and the verb to be and you should have one, two, three, four, five examples in this text. So have a go at that now, and I'll show you the answers in the next slide. So we could just say there were three bartenders working there. The bartender behind the bar was mixing cocktails. There was also a bartender talking to customers. And later on, I ordered a beer in a bottle that had a green label. It tasted awful. I then looked in the mirror hanging on the wall. By the way, I also wanted to mention at the start of the second paragraph, if you want. I wrote, I spoke to the first bartender that looked at me. That can, of course, also be, I spoke to the first bartender who looked at me. In fact, um, when talking about a person, it is, of course, normal to use who, but especially in American English, you can also use that. So obviously I must have been watching some American film before I wrote this. Looking at the slides for how I normally teach this class, I have this slide. I don't know, this might refer to the relevant section of My Grammar Lab Advanced. It may or may not, I don't know, I don't have the book with me. But you can have a look to see if this is the right page. You need to, whichever grammar book you have, you need to be sure that you understand the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. There are other names as well, restrictive and non-restrictive. Um, restrictive because it restricts the meaning um, that would be the same as defining. Make sure you also understand about relative pronouns, which ones to use. Okay, 
This has been a very long video again, I'm sorry. I'll try to make the next ones a little bit shorter. Okay, that's all for today. Bye.